Welcome, I am Foilman, and you may know me from ModsOnline.com, or perhaps from the weekly show ModsOnAir.com, and I'm here with another series in the Left 4 Dead 2 tutorials, video tutorial, showing you how to work with the editor and create a co-op campaign, pretty much, is what I'm trying to do here. And it, I have created a couple other tutorials, one that will get you started with creating your first room and something that you can actually compile and play, into the idea, uh, into another tutorial that leads you from a starting point to a safe room that uh, has enemy infected along the way, that uh, when you finally close the safe room door, it loads the next map. And I want to expand upon that, and in this tutorial, what I'd like to show you is adding some weapons, ammo, health, uh, gas cans. I want to show you how to add a rescue closet in case someone dies along the way, reinforce the nav meshes, and uh, uh, show you how all that works together. Now, if you're not sure what to do or how, or, or if you don't know any of this information that I br already brought up, I suggest that you already that you familiar yourselves with them. With this, uh, head over to modsonline.com, check the forums, take a look at the video tutorials I've done. I they should be posted here as well as on our Vimeo channel, Vimeo Mods Online. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, you'll find support information here that is wonderful. And I'm also going to assume that you have yourself uh, familiarized with the Left 4 Dead 2 game as well as the authoring tools, which I already have open here. And also what I have open here is my last map from the last video tutorial, the Tutorial 102. And this is going to be my Tutorial 103, which I will save as right now. File, save as uh, Tut 103. There we go. And this is the map that I'm going to use to uh, to expand what I was just talking about. I'm going to place a couple items here, and then you see a simple map that runs over to our safe room, and somewhere in the middle we'll place a closet, a rescue closet, for our fallen brothers. Okay. Brethren. How about that? Okay. Uh, first thing, let's start off with placing some weapons right here at our spawn point, uh, some logical uh, items. To do so, we go over to the entity placement tool here and type it start typing in the word weapon and you'll see a whole bunch of weapons show up in here and let's just start placing some such as the uh, not the auto shotgun I don't want to do something so obvious how about a pistol let's go with a uh, magnum let's place a magnum pistol here and let's also place uh, a, sh a chrome shotgun let's place one right here I'm just left clicking here in the 3D view and the other one would be the melee weapon I want to put some melee weapons in here which is the weapon melee there we go. And instead of uh, placing it this way, I'll show you, you can also place weapons this way, which says I'm going to place it there. And if I zoom in and place it here and hit the Enter key, it'll place my weapon there. All right, now the other thing you want to do, make sure that that weapon didn't somehow end up inside the ground. We don't want it to spawn inside the ground and not spawn at all because of that. We want to make sure that, well, I guess if it's an axe, you may actually rotate it around and make it look like it's sticking in the wall so somebody can grab it and just pull it like as if out of the wall. Or you may want all these items to be lying on the ground. And if that is the case, uh, you want to pull up the object properties, either double click it or alt enter. And you want to go to flags and select enable physics. And when you enable physics on these items, they will just fall directly to the ground. Gravity will do the work. All right, so I'm going to do that to each one of these items. Now also with the melee weapon, you'll notice that it says that it uh, is any melee weapon at all. And that's the default setting. It'll just automatically randomly select some sort of melee weapon. Otherwise, you can type in any melee weapon you want. And if you want multiple choices, uh, which will be randomized based on those choices, you just separate the names by columns. Problem is, uh, by commas. The problem is that uh, Valve didn't actually supply us with those names. Well, here they are. And I've also posted this on the modsonline.com website in the forums there if you want to take a look and uh, need them again. Okay. Good. Moving on. I'm going to leave this as any weapon right now. Uh, now I also want to place uh, I want to place some other items over here. I want it to be some other kind of item. So I'm going to go to the entity thing and I'm going to type in the word item. It's going to be a weapon item spawn, and I'm going to place that there. And let me show you what that is. Click on the arrow and double click it this time instead. You see it'll sl it'll randomly uh, spawn any one of these items that is number one next to it. If there's a zero, it won't spawn it. And in this case, I could also do the melee weapon the same way. And I'm going to leave this one as default, and oops, and I'm also going to, uh, I also want another one here. Uh, I'm going to make sure that there's a physics spawned on this thing, apply. And before I go any further, it is kind of interesting that these gas cans, propane tanks, and that kind of stuff, if you want it to be that, you have to go through some little 
you have to jump through some hoops. You have to do some little tricks in order to get it to spawn. Otherwise, it won't spawn at all, which is very strange. And that goes for other pickups, too. Uh, so in order for that to work, I'm going to go jump ahead here, and I'm going to give this entity a name. And I'm going to call it W underscore items. It's a good name just to use for now. Weapon items. And apply that. And I want to give this name to every other item so that uh, I can call to them using another entity later by just saying, I want W items to spawn and all of them with the same name will spawn. So that's a little trick there. And now I'm going to uh, duplicate this. I'm going to shift and drag and put it over here. And this one I'm going to purposely make Boomer Bile. So I'll do zero, zero, zero on all these. So nothing else but Boomer Bile one spawns. And you see the name stuck. That's why I, I copied it. And in flag, enable physics on a spawn item, stick. So I did that on purpose. That's why I clicked and dragged. And I want to also use this over here for gas cans. So I'm going to shift, click, drag, and put a, a random item over here, alt enter. And instead of it being boomer bile, I want it to be a gas can or a propane tank. I'll let that be randomized, apply. And I want to put in another couple over here. And this one, I'm going to make a gas can on purpose. So I'll make that a zero. Apply. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Done. OK. So there's those, those items. You know there's another way, though. If you wanted to place a gas can, I'll let you know, uh, I'll affiliate on this other option that you have. You can actually enter it as a prop physics. So if I type in prop underscore physics, not multipl physics multiplayer, not physics over prop physics, and place that here, I can then go to the item. You don't have to worry about gravity. Gravity already works on prop physics al already. We do have to worry about it being on, uh, giving it the name item, W underscore items. And we also have to select the model that it's going to be. So I'm going to browse for gas can. Not cans, but can. That one. OK. Apply. And I think that's all I need for the gas can to work. And I'm going to take, I'm going to move in and notice there it is. There's my gas can already set. The others will be randomized. That one will always be a gas can. Uh, these will always be gas cans because everything else was set to zero. Uh, very interesting how that works. But there you go. So we got our gas can set. And now I also want some health items in our safe room because that's what we're used to seeing in here. And instead of them calling it health, I'll select the entity there. They called it first aid. So I'm going to type in the word first and see first aid kit show up. And I'll put bop, bop, one for each of our survivors. And I'm also going to throw in a, a defib kit. Bop. And I also want to make sure that these have the uh, fall to the ground in physics kind of thing. So I'm going to select them all, holding down the control key. Alt, enter, flags, enable physics, apply. I don't have to give it the, ni the name of items because uh, these will spawn. Uh, these other items. Ooh, now let's get into the trick part, the the part that makes these things actually work. See, right now, if I start the game, if I compile it and start it, they'll show up. They'll work. But as soon as I add the the the, the safe mark that safe room as a checkpoint to as an end of game, they'll disappear and they won't show up. And this is how you make it work. What we need to do is we need to uh, we, excuse me. We need to uh, we need to create a point template in here. It's an entity. Where am I going there? All right. We need a point template, so I'm going to type in point underscore template. There it is. And I want to place one right over here. I'm going to place it right next to my info director, which is right next to this first player. Let me uh, adjust where it's located so it's next to it. I like keep things organized whenever possible. There we go. Good. And in this, I need to uh, open it up, and I need to say template number one is going to be W items. I want it to affect W items when this thing, whenever this thing is triggered. And in order to trigger it, I get to give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name of W underscore template so I know what it is. Template, not templates. We only have one. And that's all I need to do. I don't need to do any flags or anything like that. And now I'm going to go to our info director, which automatically starts the game for us. And under outputs, I'm going to tell it to trigger the template, which in turn will do some uh, will which in turn do what I'm telling this thing to do. I'll show you what I mean. I need to go to the outputs tab. I need to add. I, and in add, I need to say uh, on 
I don't have the right item. I need the info director. There we go. Add on gameplay start uh, uh, targets entities. I want to do the uh, this W template. So actually, I can use the uh, the eyedropper here W template. And what I wanted to do is for spawn apply. Now I'm going to go back over to this one. I accidentally added a bogus output there. So now when the game starts with the info director it'll force spawn the items in this template. That's what's gonna happen. Okay great. I can close this up. Now let's go over to the safe, uh, the, the not the safe room but the rescue closet that I was talking about and I'm gonna build a rescue closet over here and then I'm gonna show you what entities to add but before I start with that closet I am going to well, save first of all and I'm going to speed up the film for you so you don't have to sit here and watch me do it so I'll be right back Okay, there we go. We have our room all set. Now what I want to do is I want to throw in a door here. And the door is going to be prop rotating, or prop door rotating, actually. So prop door, not prop door rotating checkpoint. That was for the checkpoint in a previous tutorial. In this case, prop door rotating. I'm going to throw it right in here. And I want to open up the entity properties for that. And I want to give it a model. So I need to select a model. And in this case, let's see. I know that there is a door here, and I wish I wrote down the name of it first. Let's see, it is the small door for the airport. I just think that's a good door to use, so that's what I'm looking for. Okay, there it is. Door main 01 underscore airport underscore small. And I'll apply that door. And it's facing the wrong way, so let's rotate it this way. 270. Apply. And I'll adjust the rest of it inside the game, inside the editor. Change my grid, bring it to the floor, butt up against that, and make sure it's the door is in the door jam. And let's adjust some of these others. I think the ceiling is already good. Yeah. Okay, so there's a the door. Uh, take a closer look. It, it, it should it'll open and close for us automatically. And finally, what we need here is, is we need to put some spawn points in here for our survivors that were dead to spawn. And those would be, let's see, go to your entity. Get ready to type in your entity, being the the info survivors. Info underscore survivor rescue, not position. Position is where you would start the game. Rescue is where the rescue people would start. And I need three. Not four, not two. I need three in here because it is possible for three people to die. And the fourth one would be the person who's doing the rescuing. And I'm going to spread them out just a little bit so they're not completely on top of each other in case for some reason three do spawn all at once. There we go. And that is it. So I've got uh, my safe room with some health in it. I've got my guys. I've got some cans, some pickup items. Uh, and uh, the things that trigger those items themselves. Let's save. Now we can compile the map. All on normal. It's a pretty small map, so it'll go very quickly. Good, and let's start up the game. Let's see if I can find that game. Here we go. I'm going to start up the game, and inside of here, we're going to create our nav meshes. Now, I've already gone through the nav mesh creation in the previous tutorial, but I'm going to end up doing it here again, and I'm going to go pretty quick. Uh, let's load up our map. Map, space, toot. 103, now. Almost there. Excellent. Here's our map. And I told you the sp items would spawn. The trick is, will they spawn after we put in our checkpoint? And that's why we went through the special methods of making things spawn differently. Okay. Guys won't fall us around because we need some nav meshes. Meshes that say you can navigate through here. So here's a nice quick way to do it. Right where at the st starting point here, I'm going to face the floor and I'm going to turn on my cheats, SV underscore cheats space one. Now I'm going to nav mark walkable. Nav mark 
walkable. Now I'm going to nav generate and wait for it to generate the navigation uh, options here and then it's going to reload the map and our our uh, survivors will be able to run around. Whack the shit yes. Yes. But we still need to find some other areas in here, such as our starting point, our rescue closet, and our safe room. Or actually, it is called the checkpoint. And so what we have to do is we have to edit the navigation here. So I'm going to go open up the uh, console and type in nav underscore edit. These, again, are things that we went through in the previous tutorial. But what we didn't go through was a new way of making these things editable okay instead of opening up the nav GUI I found another way that I like to do it I like to do this open up the console Z underscore debug space one and that gives us more information about these alright now I want to turn this area right here that I'm pointing at into the player start so I'll go in the console mark player start now it's player start I didn't have to open up the GUI and close it again. Now I need to do the same thing to each one of these. Now watch this. Uh, tilde, arrow up, enter. So I can go really fast. Awesome. Okay. So there's our player start. Now we want to head this way and we want to head over to the rescue closet. Let's open up our rescue closet and let's give this a mark rescue closet. There you go. And there's also another thing you want to do with this, is we don't want to be spawning inside a rescue closet, right? So we want to do mark, and what is it called? I think it's no mobs. We also want it to be a no mob, no mob rescue closet. That is an important issue there, because otherwise it is very possible for the mob to spawn inside of this area, and then they'll break down the door, and then there won't be a rescue closet anymore. All right, good. We're done with that. Now I'm going to go running over to the check room, and I'm going to make this our check room. Mark check room, checkpoint. Sorry. There you go. Now it's marked. We are good to go. Now I am going to uh, save that what we've done. Nav underscore save. And uh, I am ready to reload the map and actually test this thing out and see how it works. But before I do that, what I want to do is I want to turn off the Z debug because that gets in the way of of the fun of what I'm going to show you. You can leave it on later and experiment with it. And I also will end up turning off uh, the uh, the nav edit. Because I don't want to see all those lines. Okay. Now, I'll type in director or start, which will start up the director. And then I'll type in map toot 103 and reload the map. And the map's loading. Almost done. Okay, here we are. Got some infected out there. Look out. And here's our gas cans. They worked. Hey. All right, so now let's grab some items. Wow, we got a lot of interesting items here. And I'm going to take some more bomb. bile. And let's start running through here. Oh. <laughs> what if, by accident, suddenly Nick died? Okay, let's kill Nick with a capital N, by the way. Oh, I didn't type to kill correctly. There's two L's in kill, right? Oh my goodness, Nick, what happened to you? Oh, it's awful what's happened to you. Okay, so Nick's dead. Uh, hopefully he'll he'll decide to spawn. Yeah, oh, Nick. Hopefully he'll decide to spawn later in there. There we go. Give those guys uh, something to talk about. And you know, eventually Nick is going to spawn in that closet, and zombies will not, thankfully. I stuck the gas can that I told to spawn over there. It's spawned. Awesome. And then we'd run over to our safe room where... Um, I don't want to extend the tutorial for too long to show you there's our health kits. <laughs> All right, so Nick is taking too long because, you know, sometimes the game takes longer than other times. And then Nick would eventually spawn inside our nice little closet right here. Okay, so there you go. That is the tutorial that uh, I wanted to show you guys. All right, I hope that's helpful to you. And uh, this is uh, going to make things fun. Yeah, so have fun and happy mapping. <laughs>